So I've never been particularly into designer fashion, but as I've been exposed to it more through fashion content, one designer has absolutely captivated me. Today, we're gonna talk about Simone Rasha. Who is she? What defines her design style? How can we plebeians imitate her runway looks with our own outfits? We're gonna answer all those questions. I'm so excited. I love her work so much. Okay, let's get started. First off, who is Simone Rasha? Basic facts, she's a 35-year-old fashion designer from Dublin, and she is of mixed Irish and Chinese heritage. Her father is fashion designer John Rasha, and she has said she was always quite involved and interested in his works, even in childhood, but originally did not want to be a fashion designer because it would be too cliche. But once she was in art school, she realized she couldn't fight it any longer. It was meant to be. I mean, she didn't say it was meant to be. She just said she changed her mind. But I would say it was divinely determined. She considers herself to be pretty reserved and private and describes her work as exposing the intimate. She's also mentioned that her process involves much more writing than drawing. She references a lot of Irish literature in her research and work. And she says each show is meant to tell a story. So very mysterious, romantic, literary vibes, which seems very on brand for her design style. There is so much more I learned about her inspiration and process that really informs her work. Kind of got into like a deep Google wormhole of interviews, but we're here for the actual fashion. So I will share more background as it becomes relevant. But right now, let's get into what defines Simone Rasha's design style. First off, color. I feel like specific colors are not always defining traits for certain designers, but in Simone's case, black and white are clearly dominant. She actually said in an interview that her first designer show ever was entirely like super simple white garments. And that is always the starting point that she builds from. She also mentions being like very enamored with her ancestors' communion dresses and wedding dresses, which first of all is just very endearing and charming um, and also is very visible in her work. When there are colors included, a blush pinky nude and bright red are both pretty prominent. The pink as a base color and red as more of like a striking accent. There's also some occasional muted earth tones like greens, browns, and tans. Simone mentioned in an interview how inspired she feels by Ireland in her work and how she thinks of it as earthy, strong, and visceral, which definitely seems at play with these colors. Next up, are patterns slash general graphic motifs. Simone rarely uses patterns at all, but when she does, it seems to pretty much always be either plaid or florals. Like I said, Ireland and its cultural roots and traditions play a huge role in Simone's work, and plaid is common in traditional Irish clothing. She has also said she's inspired by flowers, especially roses, because of the dual beauty and toughness they contain. As we'll get into more as we go, that duality is really a central motif in her work. There's also some subtle patchwork and striking embroidery which are both traditional historical crafts and processes, which she has said she emphasizes in her work. She even cites Louise Bourgeois as her biggest influence, particularly in her textile work. All right, next we have silhouettes. The biggest things I've noticed are full skirts and maybe even fuller sleeves, just like huge volume. Tears, ruffles, and the supreme tiered ruffles also appear frequently. A lot of looks have cinched waists, but some of them are just like loose and flowy and voluminous all the way through. Most of them do have some sort of structured element though, even if it's just through a detail like a harness, shoe, or collar on a shirt. Simone has talked about, is it weird that I'm just calling her Simone? Like, it feels weird to just call her Rasha because of John Rasha. And if it's a lot to say her full name every time, so I'm just going with Simone, but if there's a correct way, go ahead and let me know. Uh, anyway, Simone has talked about how femininity and womanhood is centered in all her work. And like I mentioned earlier, a core tenet of that for her is this duality of beauty and softness versus tough practicality, which you can really see in the distinct juxtaposition between flowiness and structure in her silhouettes. Next up, we have materials. And because this video is about Simone Rasha's look, we're gonna focus on just like the visual effect of certain types of materials rather than like the actual exact fabric that she uses. The first type of material that comes to mind is transparent fabrics. Things like organza, chiffon, and tulle, especially layered together or over something else flowy, just like layers and layers of transparent fabric on top of other fabrics all together to create this really ethereal, floaty shape. For the more feminine accents, silky fabrics, lace, pearls, 
gems, and ribbons are also recurring. For the more down-to-earth contrast element, leather seems to be the main staple, most often used for harnesses or jackets, and chunky knits are also common, which also once again brings to mind historical craft and Irish tradition. Beyond the garments individually, there's the actual styling of the pieces together. This is where the juxtaposition between, as she says, masculine and feminine, or hard and soft, or romantic and pragmatic, comes through the strongest. It seems like many of the pieces she designs fall more into one category or the other, so the styling of them together to create that tension is really the crux of her unique style. Specifically, it seems like most of the main garments, like shirts, skirts, and dresses, fall more into that soft, romantic, feminine side, and then she pairs them with the hard, pragmatic, masculine accent pieces, like jackets, shoes, jewelry, harnesses, or other top layers. Hello? Yes, I'm in the middle of filming a video right now. Oh, okay. So you would not have any interest in coming to a protest with me? I'm more in, I'm more in a wallowing moment <laughs> right now. Feeling more like despair, sadness. I would love to help you make your signs have um, a beautiful and strong graphic impact. Finally, before we get into the actual outfits, I just wanted to mention some sort of bigger aesthetic trends that are present in her work. Firstly, her looks are definitely maximalist. Even though the color palettes are very controlled and narrow, the layering, big shapes, array of materials and fabrics, embellishments and accents, just the sheer number of visual elements and details that go into every look create such a dimensional maximal look. This layered maximalist style, especially with those big shapes, formal feminine details, and overall romantic look, also make her outfits feel very much like fairy tale royalty garb. I mean, in her spring summer 2022 collection, she even styled a literal crown. So of course, the royalty inspired fashion trend is also very present. I've seen references to royal core, regency core, princess core. I don't know if there's like one umbrella term that encapsulates this, but you get it. Fairy tale queen inspired fashion. Of course, the poofy skirts, soft neutrals, and feminine details also bring to mind the ballet aesthetic, a trend which seems to be absolutely everywhere this year. Simone has also been using the now very trendy ballet slipper inspired shoe for years already, and when I search ballet core fashion on Pinterest, her work appeared numerous times in the results. Finally, this last one may not be quite as straightforward of a connection, but hear me out. I also definitely see elements of clown core in her design. Like with the maximalism, we kind of have to ignore color for this one, but hey, the ruffles, the big collars, the poofy sleeves, you know who else wears all those things? Clowns. Makes you think. So just to recap, Simone Russia is an Irish designer whose style is defined by minimal color, huge volume, feminine details, tough accents, and a general sense of whimsy. All right, now that we have analyzed all elements of Simone Rush's design far beyond what was necessary, it's time to show you some outfits. Okay, first I wanted to start with what I consider a signature look. When I think of Simone Rasha, this is what I picture. The main piece for this look is this vintage white nightgown, but because the nightgown is open in the front and see-through, we added this white slip skirt underneath, and then this black and white midi skirt under that just to add some volume, make the bottom half a little poofier, and add a little contrast ruffle detail on the bottom. Then for the top, this blouse is perfect because it gives us that collar element and these huge puffy sleeves, which I think looks extra fabulous paired under the shorter puff sleeves of the nightgown. Like what a perfect pairing. It's like they're meant to fit together. Then for our harsher contrast pieces, I added this black harness from Amazon and these black chunky loafers. Finally, to add in some pearls and channel the general vintage feminine details, we have this pearl beaded collar clip, some sort of funky pearl bead earrings, and some rings. For our second look, I wanted to delve a little more into color and pattern, and I especially had this collection in mind with the combined blush tones and patchwork, so I chose my patchwork dress and layered it over this gingham midi dress to add length and more dimension, but stay in the same muted color family. For a striking black accent piece, we have this tank top on top, and then on top of that, we have this super dainty little tie front pink top for a more floaty feminine detail piece. I also had to include black combat boots, another Simone Rocha classic, so I did 
did my Doc Martens. And finally, we have these chunky jade earrings for an ornamental feminine detail. Okay, next, I really wanted to try to emulate one specific look because I feel like I've been seeing this image everywhere and I thought it'd be such a fun challenge. Unfortunately, I do not have a pink poofy mini skirt or dress or any poofy mini skirt or dress. Um, this is the poofiest one I own. That's why I chose this one again. And then I layered this white shirt on top to add in a collar. I also love the bottom poking out under the sweater. I think it helps emphasize the volume of the skirt. This sweater I thought was perfect because it has that detailed chunky knit feel and the red accents that are so necessary to this look. Unfortunately for shoes, this is my tallest boot option, but then to tie the black in a bit better, I safety pinned this black bow to my sweater to match the ribbon in the photo. Truly, what a fun hack. I love this so much. I'm gonna pin bows to everything now. Finally, we're getting to an all black look, another staple, and I started with this already very layered and detailed black dress and then added this midi skirt underneath for more length and dimension. I also really love her black and red looks, so I incorporated a little of that with this wrap top because like the pattern was too perfect. Finally, over the wrap top, we have a sheer black dress and the harness to top it all off. I love the effect of all these layers in general, but I'm especially delighted with the sleeve shape it creates. Like a puff sleeve on top of a balloon sleeve on top of a flare sleeve. I'm obsessed. I love this so much. Uh, we have the same boots again, and then I added my cicada earrings because, you know, I've never seen Simone Rasha do insect motifs, but I kind of feel like that would work for her. It's very secret, dark, magic garden vibes. I think I'm onto something here. Simone, if you're watching this, call me. Okay, this next look is much simpler, but she does have a few more streamlined modern looks, so I wanted to include that too. For this look, we just have the black midi skirt again, a white button-up, and then this leather jacket, which styled normally, boring, average, not high fashion, but partially zipped and shrugged to the side, suddenly it's giving editorial avant-garde. Unique outfit hack, Try wearing your usual garments just in a different way on your body. The other very Simone Rasha detail of this outfit is the ballet shoe. I have these nude ones and then for the ribbons, surprise, it's not part of the shoe at all. It's literally just craft ribbon tied around my feet. Here's how I did it. Very simple, so cute, and it can work with a lot of other shoes too. So kind of obsessed with this now. I feel like I'm gonna be doing this all spring and summer. Also, I definitely saw this somewhere, but I have no idea who originally came up with this. So if anyone knows, please comment. Finally, we had to close it out with another signature all-white look, and I'm so sorry for the overexposure on this. It's very hard to get it right with like layered all-white outfits, but you'll see more clearly at different angles. For this one, I really wanted to play with transparent layers and the dress over pants look. So to start, we have this lace paneled slip and white pants. Then we added this white slip skirt over the pants, but under the other slip for more length and layers to that skirt section. And then on top, we added this crochet lace top with this gorgeous floral motif. Unfortunately, the florals did become a little less visible because we did, of course, have to add the sheer balloon sleeve blouse for a final layer. For this look, we're going all white, no accent colors, so we also went with white platform sandals and then kept those same white ankle ribbons, which I think it works even better with this shoe. There's so many possibilities for these. I freaking love them. Please tell me in the comments your favorite look. Also, please comment any other designers you would like to see a video in this format about. Oh, and I heard if you like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe, you will suddenly come into the funds to afford real Simone Rasha, and then you won't even have to try to recreate it with thrifted pieces like me. Okay, thanks so much for watching. If you made it all the way to now, I love you. Put a swan emoji in your comment if you made it this far, so I know that you are my favorite. Okay, thanks, bye!